get an English map. Hey guys! So we are still in Seoul in South Korea. Welcome back! Uh, we've come to Cheonggukdong Palace, right? Yuk. Actually, this in this Jiok Cheongdeok Gong. Cheongdeok Gong. I will put the name here so you guys can see what it is. In this vlog, actually, we're gonna visit a few palaces in Seoul and we're also gonna have a look around a traditional Hanok village area, which is over there, which any players of the Secret World might have remembered the bits and pieces of the Secret World that were in Seoul or in that kind of Hanoki village area type of thing anyway so this vlog we're gonna have a look at the palaces we're gonna have a look at the village area it's gonna be amazing right now we are in Cheong Cheong Duk Gong Cheong Duk Gong palace this palace was built in the 1400s it was the second palace to be built of the Joseon dynasty I believe uh, a number of kings have resided here it actually came down it was burned down in around 1500s and rebuilt in the early 1600s Apparently it is the most well-preserved palace here in Seoul. It's supposed to be very, very beautiful, so we're going to go have a look around. It's autumn time right now, so we've got some leaves falling off the trees. There's also a beautiful garden here too, but we're not going to visit it because you must be on the tour to go visit it, and we're not doing a tour today. Uh, but we are going to go have a look at the palace, uh, the palace halls and the palace area. It's going to be great. Right, we'll show you. Show you some bits and pieces. That's already a really cool thing to see. I love this little path. It's amazing. Very cool. In Jion Jion Jin. In Jion Jin, the throne hall. Oh, cool. See, you guys can see way off in the distance to the right, that is the North Tower on Namsan, which is what we climbed up earlier. Link to the vlog to, so that you guys can see that one too. construction like the really really cool joints that they put together it's amazing some of the artwork on this is phenomenal as well I do like the way that they construct these roofs here is actually really really intelligent they do it in Japan as well a lot of it is not based on any nails or glue or anything because they didn't have those things back in that time a lot of it is very very intelligent joinery just basic wood joinery um, uh, wood cut into particular fashion so the two slot together so you kind of get all these things sort of slotting in here's a good example actually there how it just all slots together there's actually a really amazing twitter account where you can see some of this japanese joinery and how uh, innovative it is i'll drop it down below in the description so you guys can take a look at it the pathway actually takes you up and or un well up and underneath the building into another courtyard that's so cool Look at these beautiful angles that they have here, not just right angles. Uh, the buildings are kind of clustered together, so it creates some others as well. Oh, it's nice. These are some of the blurb that you get. You can see, you can read it in Chinese, Japanese, Korean, uh, and English, which is helpful because that's the only one I can really read. This looks actually quite new. Yeah, I mean, it would have What's been What's this, nice. 1900s? Yeah, for the latest um, um, kings and queens that lived here going into the palace rooms now and I think this was actually destroyed by fire in the early 1900s and then rebuilt using some items from a, a different palace after that so I don't think all of these buildings were destroyed it was just the, these ones within here but and it seems like some of the latest um, kings and queens to have used it is around the, that, that early 1900 period so some of the furniture there is obviously indicative of that period showcases a little bit more of what was it was like previously look at all these rooms oh it's quite cool so all these old palaces have underfloor heating and this is how the floors were heated look the palace is directly above us the rooms of the king and the queen and underneath here there's like a stove uh, so that it would naturally
actually heat the floors. Oh, right, sorry, big step. There you go, look, have a look at that. And then it goes up into the ceiling above. So if any of you guys are Spirited Away fans, um, check out that door above us. Doesn't it just remind you of the door that uh, Chihiro goes through to enter into the abandoned Yuenchi? Yuenchi is uh, amusement park. <laughs> I couldn't remember the word in English. It uh, goes into the abandoned amusement park. I think that's the door that takes you into the secret garden, which is being over there. But that is so cool. Look at that. That's a beautiful shot. Oh. <laughs> Liam's taking a picture for those guys. <laughs> Look at those wonderful leaves above the door to the secret garden. So red. They're so deeply red. That's about the same colour as my lipstick. Found a sundial that might actually tell the time this time. Have you worked it out? I'll look at the time and then you tell me what you think it is. That must be 12.32, It's 12.54, so that's not that bad. Look at these beautiful hexadecimal buildings, they're so cool. So apparently these are libraries and other study rooms that the king and princes will use. And they're beautiful. So we've actually popped over to a different palace. Right next to Cheongdokgung is Cheongyonggung, which is a dowager queen palace. It was built for the dowager queens, I think in the late 1400s. Uh, and then a load of women related to the court or related, related to the royal family would then live there. Princesses, other dowager queens, concubines, other such women would, would be living in this palace. And one of the interesting things about it is it has a building that faces east. Most of the buildings, the palace buildings actually face south. Uh, uh, they, but this one has a building that faces east, so it actually looks at a really pretty mountain. The rest of its buildings face itself, it just has one building that faces east. It has a bit of a sad history though. Apparently during the Japanese occupation, the Japan downgraded it from being a palace into being a park, and they actually turned it into a zoo, which is horrible. After uh, Korea's independence was restored, uh, the Korean government uh, restored it back to being a palace and have been working on restoring it ever since properly. Now you notice that behind me, I, we're not actually at the palace right now we're in the gardens but the gardens of the palace are beautiful they're free well they're i mean they, 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 there's an extra ticket to come to the palace but the gardens are part of the palace you can walk around it and right now is autumn so it has these beautiful color leaves and people are taking pictures as they're sort of falling down a bit like they do in japan with the cherry blossom season which way is east that way that way oh so they've just blocked them off with buildings. So yeah, we're gonna go into the palace now. And this is the palace that faces east, but as Liam said quite clearly, there's loads of buildings up now. So even if people were living in here, um, then they wouldn't be able to see it anyway, the mountain that they're supposed to be able to see by the palace facing east. So we'll take a look at the palace. So that is the gate that we just passed over there. This is all the courtyard. And that is the main palace building outside the main gate as well this is the front gate to the palace still facing east still cannot see a mountain <laughs> looks amazing i'm going to turn all the way through this you can see that we're inside the gate here and then out for a view of the main palace that is so beautiful So we just popped out from that sort of tunnel thing that's over there and the original palace that we were at, the one that faces east, is over the other side facing in that direction. You can see these buildings here actually all face south. So if this way is south, that makes sense, right? That's east, that's south, that makes sense. Uh, so yeah, these buildings all face south, which is the traditional way for buildings to be facing these palaces, the traditional way for the palaces to be facing. Uh, this is obviously another gate building. Actually, I don't know if it's a gate. It might be just a general pavilion. I'm trying to read the kanji on top and it doesn't have gate in it. So Liam just translated this for us. It does say pavilion. It kind of makes sense because this looks very pavilion-esque. I think it is that first word, which is pavilion. The first kanji. Yeah. One to remember then. So we're done with Chang Yong Gung. We're going to go back through Chang Jok Gung. 
we'll see a little bit of something that we missed before coming in here and then we're gonna go visit the Hanuk village which will be pretty amazing. Liam made a comment earlier that loads and loads of these rooms actually have uh, have been covered in white paper. We suspect that it's been covered in white paper to protect them so that they're not getting sun damaged. That's a beautiful building. The chimney is down there on the bottom left. At the top right, that building up there, I can read some of the kanji. The first kanji is is do, it means hall. And the last kanji is the one that you usually use for kan for like a separation or uh, time. Like jikan, jikan means time. Uh, but it looks like similar to that. Hall or something. It could be, it could be, but it's definitely a hall anyway. Have I got a leaf in my hair? Yeah. Nice. So I'm seeing a lot of similarities in Japanese, Chinese and Korean architecture when it comes to palaces and temples, this kind of thing. But one of the things unique to this area or unique to these Korean palaces that I've seen is these brick walls. This is this kind of brickwork I've not seen in any other temple that I've been to around the world. And they seem to be relay laying bricks out in a particular pattern. Uh, some of these are very intricate shapes and sizes as well and you've seen them throughout these palaces look it's really interesting so i'm not 100 percent sure whether it's unique to korea it's just i haven't seen them in any other palaces i've been in so these shutters it seems like you take that wooden bar out and once you take those wooden that wooden bar out they fold down and then you can close them properly oh my gosh i can't remember them so we just popped over to see those trees over there they are actually persimmons i didn't know that they grew at this time of the year and then over here look at this beautiful courtyard or tree area oh it's lovely with that sort of temple complex one of the halls up above so pretty yes good try guy <laughs> So actually we just read a very very small bit uh, about this area just now on one of the information points and it seems like the reason why all of these buildings are this kind of brownie colour and they have all these sort of lattice effects, uh, small rooms with shutters and such is because the king of that time, what did you say around 1847, so around the 1850s, the king of that time really really loved this style and this is actually quite a foreign style to Korea, this is not typical Korean style. So he built all of these palaces here in this style which is completely different from what was usually in Korea. That's really cool. Guys, guys, two magpies. <gasps> it's like ultimate good luck. Not that I believe in that at all but I mean like two. Oh, that is so cool. See we missed a few buildings of the main part of Gyeongdokgung, so we're just popping in to see them. These are actually the government buildings and they're beautiful, beautiful passages. This building over here has a second floor. You might be able to see it just there. There you go. Oh, and just lots of uh, little intricacies as well. Um, pillars, raised sections here. <laughs> so raised sections here, large halls over there. Liam, do the magic trick. Disappear behind the wall. <laughs> so that's it. We're done with Cheong Cheong Diok Gung. <laughs> it was really, really amazing. I struggled to think about what was my favourite. I actually think. Well, Liam said that he liked the sort of differently colour, like the more muted colour buildings. I think I like the government buildings best. The way that they all intertwined, it became a little maze-like after a while, which is really really cool so much about to hit people in the face of the camera um anyway we're gonna move on now to the hanuk village so uh yeah that's gonna be pretty interesting place i mean the architecture there is gonna be really beautiful so we'll see you there in a sec the street looks beautiful is that a slide Look at that beautiful house hanging over the street see i think this kind of very very skinny lattice is actually my favorite pictures in their traditional dress throughout the village i'm obsessed with the bricks Guys, look at that, all of the roofs of the Hanuk village. So this is one of the views on the route as well. 